So this is G484 homework booklet question 4 um, and it's an interesting one in the sense that again we start up with a very straightforwardly synoptic question. So it's asking you to define the kilowatt hour which is straightforwardly G482 material and what we're looking for is simply the kilowatt hour is the energy used by one kilowatt device in one hour. Uh, they do also accept what that is in watts, uh, sorry, in joules, which is 3.6 times 10 to the 6. But the key point is, and you did have to mention that word, energy, it's the energy. Um, and then it carries on again, still in synoptic sense. A domestic refrigerator works at mean power of 70 watts. Calculate the cost of running this refrigerator for a week, that cost. So we've got to calculate, first of all, the energy, uh, power times time, so the energy is the power times the time, the energy in kilowatts is 70 divided by 1000 and the time in hours, 7 days times 24 hours, we get to 11.8 kilowatt hours and then simply multiply that by the cost of each kilowatt hour, 0.12 pounds, okay we're after the cost in pounds, so either 0.12 or if you don't you need to convert to pounds at the end, uh, and we get to the 1.41 pounds, so 1 pound 41. Part B is when the G484 material per se comes into play. So we've got a jug containing 2 kilograms of milk placed in the refrigerator, and the milk cools from 18 to 3 degrees C over a period of 100 minutes. This specific heat capacity of milk is that value there. Um, you might notice that's actually quite close to water, 4,200. Um, obviously milk is predominantly water. The fat and other things obviously lowering it a little bit. So calculate the thermal energy removed from the milk. So it's a straightforward E equals MC delta theta. We've got M of the two kilograms from the question. We've got C that we were given in the question. And then delta theta, just 18 minus 3, the temperature difference. And that comes down to 1.14 times 10 to the 5 joules. And then I guess it's a G481 synoptic question, the rate at which thermal energy is being removed from the milk. Um, simply the amount of energy removed, 1.14 times 10 to the 5, divided by the time in seconds, so it was 100 minutes, so we need 100 times 60, 19 watts. There we go or 19 joules per second, they're obviously entirely equivalent. C is perhaps the interesting question. Another container full of milk is placed in a freezer and cooled from 18 to minus 18 degrees C. And assume that the thermal energy is removed <coughs> excuse me, at a constant rate and the freezing point of milk is 0 degrees C. The specific heat capacity of below is significantly less than above. So if we're taking energy out at a constant rate, to start with when we've got a liquid, so in this section here we've got a liquid, when we've got a liquid, it should the energy is coming out at a constant rate, the temperature drops at a constant rate. We've obviously got uh, loss of kinetic energy of the particles there. And then while it's freezing, the energy remains, uh, remains constant, the energy remains constant, the temperature remains constant, the kinetic energy of the particles, it's the potential energy changing there. But the key point, therefore, is that the temperature remains constant um, and, yep, no temperature change while it's freezing. And then it falls at a constant rate again. So, first mark for losing temperature as it cools down at a steady rate. Negative gradient line between 18 and 0 degrees. A horizontal line along the time axis, in other words, where the temperature is naught, so at naught degrees C while it's freezing a horizontal line. And then the third mark is for having that line there. Now, it says that the specific heat capacity of milk below naught degrees is significantly less. So if the specific heat capacity is less, that makes it, um, for the same energy change, I get a bigger temperature drop. Now, for the same times, we're getting the same energy changes because we've got a constant rate uh, the energy has been removed, we've got that there, and so if we're removing energy at the same rate, but we're going to get a bigger temperature change, that means this line here is steeper. So that's G484, question 4. And I've just realised when I was talking about 
part C I made my usual mistake which is to refer to particles. The example doesn't like particles, uh, we need to be talking about the molecules of the milk. Um, didn't matter in this question but I'd hope to lead you astray there. So remember when we're talking about kinetic theory, talk about the, either the molecules or the atoms rather than uh, what I tend to do which is talk about more generally those as particles. It, they really don't like that so please make sure you don't make that mistake.